Welcome to the channel. This is Go Greddy and welcome to the Gran Turismo World Series. It is test season number two here in 2022. And it's round number two as we are in the group four cars at Yamagawa in Japan. Now this is a make-believe track. It is not a real track, but it is still exciting. So stick around, check it out. All right, so it is time to sign up for the manufacturers. And what did Greddy go with? Well, if you looked at the opening clip, you might have guessed it. It wasn't Honda. <laughs> That's right. I signed with McLaren, signed that contract on the dotted line. They don't show you signing it anymore, which I used to think was kind of cool. But anyway, so they lower my cars there. I got a fancy green one and a pretty little orange one right there. And boy, we are ready to send it. So let's go out for qualifiers. Let's get this thing going. And boy, nothing gets you pumped like being ready to go for qualifying. As we're ready to go out, nothing happens. One hour later, nothing still happens. One day later, still nothing. <laughs> and finally, with four minutes left in, of the 10 minute qualifying, they finally let us out on the track to qualify. And it looks like everyone was let out at the same time, though, so no one has an advantage over anyone else. Only problem is we have this huge gaggle of folks here for qualifying. Navas, you see him dive out of the way there because he had the penalty. Now, that is qualifying awareness, folks. That's the kind of qualifying you want to have when you're qualifying as well as those around you. Just be aware of uh, the situation and try not to upset the other drivers around you or their qualifying lap. So got the slipstream of an Atenza, but unfortunately the slipstream of uh, the Atenza has a slipstream of a, an Alfa Romeo and then a BMW, which is behind a Magan trophy. So this is just a really, actually the order is kind of backwards here. We want the Atenza in front, followed by maybe the Magan, then the BMW, and then maybe the 4C, and then me. Like that, that would be a better order of things. But right now we're just stacking up on each other. None of us are really able to get a good qualifying lap in as we're all just over each other's back bumpers coming down the straight here i crossed the line with a pretty poultry 143.324 i mean i can run those kind of laps with a full tank of fuel so i wasn't real happy that about that and now i was behind this alfa romeo 4c and i know it's not real fast on the straights and i'm like oh what am i going to do with this guy so i try and get on the gas early to try and make a pass here before the uh, chicane but unfortunately went in the grass Mo grass, got grass and dirt all over the tires, spun out, met Barry R. Hello, Barry R. And then I uh, just came to a screeching halt. So that was the end of my qualifying because in four minutes you only had two shots. That was good for qualifying PA. So let's get to the final. There is no strategy. It is a sprint race. New tires need to be changed. We got one X tire. We got one X fuel. So you can just let it rip. Just see how fast you can get around here. And all the practice lobbies. Or rather, the practice rankings, the Atenza and the BMW M4 were just setting it on fire. They were just murdering everybody with the times. Just unbelievable. The OP car here for sure. And we'll see if we can't try to run one or two of them down during the race. But before we do that, we got to deal with S7 Hovercraft in front of us in the Magan. Through the S's looking good. But I know I have to dispatch of him quickly. Not much top end on that Magan, and I'm going to send it down the inside. Right here as he stays far outside to the right, I stay down on the inside. Give him plenty of room on the outside. Don't want to push him off the track there. As you can see, get him more in a car length, or car width, rather. And he drives off the track himself, off into the grass. So maybe a forced air. Not, not didn't touch him, but a forced air just down the inside. Just got him off his line just a little bit. And now it's time to put the old head down and look over towards Thierry, who's in a Supra. Thierry, pretty fast guy. You can see I'm 1.19 seconds behind him right there. So got a lot of time to make up. The idea is to get down within 0.75 seconds to be in the slipstream. I'm going to try and come out of this hairpin with my hair on fire. See if I can't track down Thierry. Maybe put some pressure on him like I did with Hovercraft. Maybe force an error, force a mistake, something like that try and help me get back up towards the front here after that pretty abysmal qualifying. As you can see, something's going on in front. We've got a pretty tight pack of competitors there, which is always good for the guy in the back because it usually means side-by-side -side racing is slowing you down. You can lose up to second and a half, maybe even more when you're racing side-by-side -side with other folks. So it always bodes well to those trying to chase them down as we go into corner one, the long left hand. You can see I've now broke within the slipstream range there just above my name you can see i'm within that 0.75 seconds 
when you're a competitor and you see that car behind you start getting within that slip range you might start to doubt yourself a little bit i know i have in the past thinking man am i fast enough to hold him off or has he just got better pace than me but now Thierry's pretty experienced so i don't know if he's thinking all that but i know that i am actually not doing a terrible job here of you know getting back into the race with these guys out front about 6.8 seconds off the lead Thierry struggles there through the fast left hander and I'm able to have a really nice exit. Now he goes down the inside to defend. I stay along the outside. Going to try for the cutback here. As he goes narrow, I come back across, get on the gas early. So much so, I almost run into the back of him right here. But he moves over to the right. And it's a drag race to the first corner. It's Supra versus McLaren. Heading down towards turn one. Who is going to win it? I get on the brakes as late as possible and send it in the corner, trying to hug that inside line. Super goes out wide. He's probably looking for a little bit of a cutback himself, unable to make anything work there for him. And I'm able to make the move at turn one in the McLaren. So far, the car is feeling planted, feeling good here at Yamagawa. Pretty happy with the 650S at this point, but I got to put my head down. Got to put in those good lap times. You see, I got 143.451. I want to keep it in those 143s all the, the while trying to chase down Andrew Racing in front of me in the OP car, in the Atenza. What makes it OP? It's just got a lot of top end on the straights and with the four-wheel drive, the all-wheel drive. It can really get on the gas early and power out of the corners. And uh, pretty stable as well. If it gets in the grass, things like that, it usually can grip up pretty good. So, um on to lap number three, a little later, I'm sorry, lap number four, uh, heading into turn one. I am actually falling out of the slipstream here now a little more than a second. I'm starting to doubt myself. I'm like, man, can I, can I catch these guys? I thought I was running them down pretty good, but now I'm starting to fall off. And fast forward onto lap number five, and still sitting about 1.1 seconds, but now they start to race a little bit side by side. Let me come back, get into the slipstream. I'm like, this is just what the doctor ordered. Gretti is in the suck, heading down through the S's, just falling out here, but that's okay because I know that that McLaren is all over the rear of the Tenses, and I see the front end pop up on it right there. They hits the curb, and they are just going at it as we head towards turn one. I'm licking my chops. I'm like, oh, I can get in on the action now. We're going to make this a three-way battle for P4, and with 10 laps to go, anything can happen. Just got to concentrate on the track. Try and keep those lap times in the 43s. Get the brakes there before the curb and get down in the fourth gear. I want to get my left tires all the way over on that first curb, back onto the second curb, and again onto the third curb. Don't want to really get into the grass there, but definitely want to get all of that curb underneath your tires. So get on the brakes after that 130R and down into first, up into second. Power out of the corner. I am now well within the slipstream. Putting a little bit of pressure on Ariel as he's putting the pressure on R Andrew Racing in front of him. Me and Ariel both in the McLarens. Now I'm going to keep this tight line yet again heading into the S's. Trying to stay on the underside. Ariel thought maybe I could drive underneath him there. But he just carried just enough speed to hold me back at bay. Now back into the S's. And it is bumper to bumper in here. you got to trust yourself through these S's. you got to trust you know, your, your just natural instinct of where to throw the car back and forth is you can't really see the entrance too well at 120 miles an hour as you're going into those things. So get a look down the inside. Ariel covers it pretty good, shuts the door on me. I back out, get back on the gas. Now I'm going to try and see if I can't figure something else out. So I feel like I'm coming through a few of these corners a little bit faster than Ariel is and Andrew racing in front. So get on the brakes there again a little bit early. I want to get a good throttle on it on the exit. So I get on the throttle there as I just as I'm hitting onto the curb, that first curb, powering out. Now I feel like I'm really reeling them in right here. And I feel like Ariel's got a good run on Andrew racing. So I'm thinking Ariel's going to go down the inside here. So I'm going to go with him, but he does not send it on the side. In fact, they both go a little bit deep. So I drop it into first, peg it on the apex, slam it into gear, pull out, get the move done. The crowd goes wild. They loved it. Gretty making a move in the hairpin. Now I've got Andrew racing in front of me with eight laps to go. Can we make anything happen against this Atenza? This car is just a monster here at Yamagawa. So much top speed, you know, so much power coming out of the corners as I almost get into his quarter panel, coming out of the right hander, heading down towards the home stretch, but managed not to hit him. So that is good. I want to keep it clean. Now I look down the inside again as he goes wide into turn one. And I just barely 
miss out on getting side by side and forcing something into the S's. Didn't really want to, but hey, you got to make the pass and you can make the pass. Now I'm up right behind him into the S's. Looks like he misses his turn and gets into the grass, gets a little sideways. It is going to be another drag race as now it is a Tenza versus McLaren heading in to 135R down the inside. I make the move, come out the other end, smelling good, looking good. And I took P number four, and now I've got eight seconds to the lead pack. Can I chase them down onto lap number 12? I've dropped that down by two tenths to 7.9, but you can see the lap times are staying consistent in the 143s. Man, if I can just keep at it, I might be able to make something happen here in the last few laps. But as we head down to the final lap, still a 7.6 gap to the leaders in front. And it does look like they are racing up there. They look like they're tightly packed together. Maybe I can get lucky. Maybe one of them can knock the other one off the track as we go to the external camera view here at Yamagawa on Gran Turismo 7. What a beautiful game this is. As, as much as it angers me at times and as much as I want the uh, the credits to work better and the lobbies to work better, this is an absolutely stunning game as the daytime has changed now into nighttime. The lights have come on. You know, the sun is settling across the track. The lighting is absolutely gorgeous. And the, the, the grip on the track is changing ever so slightly. I just absolutely love it. I hope they can sort out the rest of the few little annoyances that are in the game. As we come down the final stretch, the crowds cheer me on. I flash my lights, heading down. We take P4. Picked up four positions in that race to take a fourth place. And I am extremely happy with that result. So the McLaren team looks like they're pretty happy with me. I got my gentlemen over there clapping. As we look, I've got 265 points for that race. So I'm going to put it in the bank. Hope you enjoyed the race. Hope you enjoyed all the action. If you did, hit the like and or subscribe. Check out some more. For myself, go Greddy. Y'all have a great evening. DJ Clean, take us out of here. <laughs>